Well, I discovered it because um, having made some comments about gender issues, a school teacher contacted me and said, have you looked at the SIMS system? Now, the SIMS is the school's information management system, uh, whereby perfectly legitimate information mostly about children is recorded, their medical history, their age, their date of birth, etc., etc., uh, and it is a useful tool. Uh, but I then discovered, because I'm chairman of a board of governors of a primary school, that within that SIMS system, the, SIM system, the latest edition now has a drop-down box whereby the child, at their discretion, can decree by what pronoun they want to be uh, described, and then a further drop-down box which indicates that it can be concealed from the parent. In other words, it's to be used only in school. So you have a situation where Johnny leaves home as Johnny, can decide to go into school and say, I want to be called Janine, I want to be referred to as she or some other pronoun. Uh, 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 toilet accommodation has to be uh, adjusted, etc. And then they go home again uh, and become Johnny. And all of that, clandestinely, uh, to see uh, uh, protected from the knowledge of the parents. Now, that seems to be fundamentally wrong, that, that that system should be an operation behind the backs of parents. Well, um, you're saying it's wrong from your point of view, um, but it's maybe not wrong from the point of view of the child who wants to confide in someone and doesn't want their parents to know. They're not comfortable yes, with but, their parents knowing. Yes, but, so what does that child do, Jim, if they if they don't want their ch their parents to know? Yes. Do they hold it in and speak to no one? No, well, let's be clear. They are a child, so their legal guardian, in most cases, is their parent. The parent has a right to know. Uh, you know, even the United Nations Convention on the, on the Rights of the Child in Article 14 says the states should not conceal from the parents matters pertaining to children. So, you know, it's a fundamental. And yet here we have this clandestine process in our primary schools, even in our very preschools, because the guidance that's been issued by the Education Authority applies right through the gambit of education. So even in those schools, they have this facility uh, uh, to facilitate concealment from parents of something which creates this absurd situation where in school you're a, you're a girl, at home you're a boy, or vice versa. You know, who's trying to mess the heads of these children uh, when you arrive at that situation? And, you know, Why even in England... Why Jim, it's messing with the heads and children rather than empowering children that they are who they believe they want to be. Yes, but the child might think that today and think something different tomorrow. The child might think that today and continue to think that for the rest might, of their life well, and might have a spirit the, in them, which is Jim Allister. No one will tell me who I want to be. I'll decide who I am. And I, 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 I will not tell my parents. My parents, who are they? What, what interest of theirs is it? Those who look after me, provide for me, they shouldn't know. Uh, any of this. Well, I think they should, and I think it's quite clear, and this is why in England, for example, uh, where this has just gone as far as this, we now have NHS guidance from NHS England saying schools should not conceal from parents this information. We had the Education Minister, uh, Joanne Keegan, in England over the summer saying that government guidance is coming, but in the meantime, schools should always engage with and inform the parents. That seems to me a fundamental precept, or a premise of any of this, that an educational process is one involving child and parent. So how dare a school, uh, under the Education Authority, at their guidance, facilitate a situation where they shut out the parent? You know, most of this information... Like well, there's actually, this, this guidance has been around for a few years, by the way. About 2021. Yeah. I, 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 there is a contradiction, or what could be interpreted as a contradiction within uh, the guidance between 9.17 and 9.18. As I get older now, I'm starting to talk like this lot. You know, I sort of talk with clauses, 9.17, 9.18, all this malarkey. Anyway, um, it reads like this, 9.17. If a young person has not informed their parents that they are questioning their gender identity or identity as transgender, it is important that staff do not do so without the young person's consent, Right. So, it, 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 it is saying 
do not tell parents without the young person's consent. The very next paragraph says, where a parent does not recognise a young person's gender identity or does not support their transition, staff working in schools and other educational settings are generally advised to, pre to preserve the parent's right to make the decision about their child. Yeah, but I mean, how can that be done when the very uh, arrangement in the SIMS programme is to conceal is to say these are pronouns only to be used in school, where the very first premise, uh, and you want to talk about it, it's 9-3 of this guidance, is that a, where a young person comes out to a member of staff, this should be treated as confidential and should only be discussed with the parent with the young person's consent. So it's quite clear that the premise of all of this <coughs> is you, at the, at the child's behest, conceal from their parent that which uh, is very pertinent to how their child has been brought up and how their child is developing. I, I want to show you all tonight um, the different pronouns um, <laughs> that this system actually um, registers. So this is this, this management system within schools. Um, let's have a look at it. So that's a checkbox to yeah, say only yeah. use in school. And if we look at some of those pronouns, well, it includes... I don't know, Jim, you've got glasses on. Well, I don't. Can you can you read some of those for me? Well, well, not from here, I can't. But I, when I first read them, I thought, oh, there's a there's a multiplicity of languages here. And I've got them here. I discovered I can, they're, there they're, wasn't. They're close enough to me. Right. I've got them here. I can read them. Z, Zim, Zer, Zis, Z, Self. I am Er, Er's, Er, Self. Te, Ter, Tem, Ter's, Ter, Self. E M R Ers M self. Well, I must say, I, I would, laughing, I would, I would be embarrassed. Take this seriously. They do. I would be embarrassed. Why are you laughing? I would be embarrassed if I was an educationalist uh, and had to facilitate and accommodate a situation where someone could use any made-up pronoun that makes no sense to anyone no, no, to it describe make sense themselves. To you. Certainly it makes doesn't. Sense to lots of people in our community. Oh, does it? Who well, want what does Zizum Za mean? What does it mean? It means that people, that children want, and, and indeed adults, want to be referred, referred to this. It's about gender diversity. It's about... Yes, but what is, what is the, the gender identity? Z, Zim, Za, Zu. What are those gender identities? The department can't even tell us. But they put all this nonsense into a guidance. It need to correspond to any particular identity. Well, surely education is about... Uh, educating people in the right way to speak, in the right pronouns, in the right language to use, and then we have this made-up gibberish uh, adopted for pronouns. That is really, so, that is so offensive, and you know. Well, it. I don't think that is offensive because you know what made do those gibberish? what that do those things mean? Described. What do those things mean? It means that this someone is an Jim... education system, right, where you want people to emerge from it educated, uh, equipped for the world, uh, equipped to make their living. And you're, you're promoting and advancing behind the backs of the parents that you can use a pronoun like zoo and zum and whatever you it's want. It's not zoo. It's z and All zim. Right. Big difference. And it seems to me that we really have gone beyond the pale in terms of craziness. If all that can be done behind the backs of the parents. And so that's the design of this programme, to do it behind the backs of the parents. <coughs> Well, it gives the option, doesn't it? There's a tick box which we've already shown you within the system where if the child says, you do not tell my parents, then it seems that you as a parent will not be told. That's why we're doing this story tonight. Pick up the phone to us if you are a parent. If you